Julian Blackman may be the best rookie defender in the NFL right now, but if you looked at his recruiting profile, you would have said that he would have had a hard time making a Power 5 football team, yet alone a potential Defensive Rookie of the Year candidate. Julian sealed the Colts win over the Bengals with a late interception, and forced a fumble in overtime against the Packers, in which the Colts would hit a game-winning field goal. You may say that isn't that big of a deal, but Pro Football Focus rated him as the best rookie defender in the league, and he was not given that high of a grade when the Colts took him in the third round. But that's okay to Julian, because that is how it's always been. Today we'll talk about the incredible journey of Julian Blackman, and how he went from one offer to potential AFC Rookie of the Year. We will also talk about his career with the Colts so far, and why he deserves to win Defensive Rookie of the Year. But first, if you love football, I try to bring you guys the best content on YouTube, so be sure to subscribe. Give the video a like, share it with your friends, comment your thoughts, suggest a future video topic, and stay until the end to help the video get in the algorithm so it'll do better and I can make you guys more content. Now let's get started and talk about the inspiring story of Julian Blackman. Let's go way back and revisit the journey Julian took to get to this point in his life. We have to go all the way across the country to the town of Layton, Utah, where the Blackmans were born and raised. He said he got his competitiveness and toughness in the backyard when he would play against his brothers. His dad would make the kids run the Oklahoma drill, which in case you guys don't know, it's basically where two players will run full speed at each other and one guy gets plowed and the other guy emerges victorious. It's such a brutal drill that the NFL actually banned it to make the game safer, but Julian's dad saw it as a way to toughen up little Julian, the youngest of the three brothers. Julian got it destroyed a lot, but he would always get back up and wanted to do it again, and that's the toughness that helped him in the long run. And yeah, one brother went on to play college basketball, and the other played college football as well. Julian became a three-sport athlete, and he was good at all three. He was so blessed with athletic ability that it was one of the toughest decisions of his life when he would have to determine what sport he would pursue. He was a star on his state championship basketball team, one of the best football players in the state, and one of the best long jumpers in the state as well. Football, as you might imagine, came pretty easy for Blackman. Offense or defense, he thrived at both. He was a big time receiver and he would often change sides and frustrate opposing quarterbacks in the secondary. He was a three star recruit, but he may have not gotten much recruiting interest because three games into his senior year, he broke his hand. He's also getting calls from Division I basketball coaches who wanted him on the team and he would have to choose between football and basketball. Hoops had his heart, but football was more practical for him. He was only six foot two, so he felt he would not have been able to get as far in basketball and football was the avenue for him, so it was a pretty easy decision at the end of the day. The main problem was that he was not highly recruited by many Power 5 programs. In fact, it was just one. Utah was the only school that saw potential in him, and their defensive coordinator Morgan Scally had this to say about Julian. Quote, he came to our camps and would jump in front of every line and compete with anyone. We just loved his competitiveness. There was never a question. We were like, how does this guy only have one Power 5 offer? He would never get another Power 5 offer, and he committed to the only big school that gave him a chance, and he became a Utah Ute. According to 24-7 Sports, he was a three-star recruit, a number 67 athlete, and the 935th best player in the class of 2016. With a chip on his shoulder, he was ready to go out and show the other Pac-12 schools that they had made a serious mistake in not recruiting him. As a freshman, he'd play in nine games on special teams and appeared on defense in four games. He ended up having two tackles and two kickoff returns for a total of 26 yards. He basically did what every freshman is expected to do. His role would increase as a sophomore though. He became a second team all Pac-12 selection after he started all 13 games, led Utah in receptions with third, which was also best for third in the conference, and he also had 10 passes defended, which was ninth in the Pac-12. He had 48 tackles and he had broken out as a corner. As a junior, it was basically the same story. He led Utah with 10 pass breakups, which was best for fifth in the Pac-12, and led Utah and tied for eighth in the Pac-12 with 11 passes defended. He also had 48 tackles again, four of which were tackles for loss. Once again, he was named to the second team All-Pac-12, but he would make a change at positions his senior year. He realized that his team would need a better safety, and they had plenty of corners, so he switched positions. It ended up working out for him, as he had 60 tackles, 4 pass deflections, and 4 interceptions, one of which was a pick 6. He was one of the best safeties in the country, and he was named a second team All-American because of it. Because he was a senior, he was going to head to the NFL, but a lot of people did not know what to expect in terms of what he would do as a pro. He was rated as an All-American by Pro Football Focus, but he was not supposed to be a day one pick. He was compared to Eddie Jackson coming out of Utah, and many expected him to be a day two NFL draft pick. He wound up getting taken with the 85th overall pick in the third round by the Indianapolis Colts. 
On Julian's playbook, he wrote, quote, Defensive Player of the Year. That was his goal, and he was going to win it, and a lot of people would have called him crazy, and any fan who would have said that, they would have been called crazy as well. No defender drafted after 85th has won the award in almost 30 years, so why would anyone believe it? He said, quote, I wrote those words down because I truly believe that's the talent I have. That's what I can bring to this team, and it's definitely been on my mind since the beginning. You can call him crazy, but right now he should be the front runner for the award. It all started when Malik Hooker went down with an Achilles injury, and he was going to get a chance to start in their Week 2 matchup. He played well, but it wasn't until the Colts played the Bears that he really had his first big moment. With the Bears desperately trying to mount a comeback in the fourth quarter, Blackman jumped in Nick Foles' pass inside the red zone to keep the Colts ahead 16-3, and the Colts would go on to win 19-11. He would do it again, except this time it came at a much more critical time. Against the Cincinnati Bengals, he picked off rookie sensation Joe Burrow with just under 40 seconds to play in the game as Cincinnati was trying to come back and win. But Julian did not let that happen and he had that big pick, and right there is when he won the hearts of all Colts fans. Those two plays would have been enough to make some noise, but Julian made the biggest play of his career this past weekend against the Packers. After the Colts committed five holding penalties in one drive, in what should have been a game-stealing sequence, Rodgers and the Packers drove almost 90 yards down the field and had a field goal to tie it up. After the Packers won the toss, the game looked like it was probably in doubt, except the young safety trusted his gut. He thought they were going to do a screen play to Valdez Scantling, and he was 100% correct. He knew the play before it was happening, so he split the two blockers and punched the ball out of Valdez Scantling's arms, and the Colts recovered it. From there, they have a couple runs and then have a walk-off game-winning field goal by Rodrigo Blankenship to advance to a 7-3 record and first in the AFC South. Blackman has been making big plays all year, and the Colts superstar linebacker Darius Leonard said, quote, We gotta start talking about him for a defensive rookie of the year. There's nobody doing what he's doing. He's one to talk because Leonard won the award in 2018. In 8 starts so far, Blackman has 26 tackles, 2 interceptions, 6 passes defended, and 2 tackles for loss, with that fumble too. It's crazy because he wasn't supposed to play much this year because he had torn his ACL in December and no one expected anything out of him. He has proven the world wrong so far and should come away with the Defensive Player of the Year award. Pro Football Focus rated him as the top young safety in the NFL and he has definitely lived up to that. His story is pretty cool and it goes to show you that you don't have to have a big time offer to become a big time player and as a Colts fan he's already one of my favorite guys in the league. But what do you guys think of his story? If you're a Colts fan let me know what you think of him and if you're just a fan of football in general who do you think should be the defensive rookie of the year? Also be sure to let me know who I should do next and don't forget to subscribe before you go and check out all my other videos on the end screen at the current moment. I hope to see you guys again soon but until next time peace.